Hello, Jim Hodges here. Windsor here. Wanted to take a few minutes to put this video guide together for the do's and don'ts of obedience with him, hand signals, the motivation, which is praise and consequence, all of those things. Right off, uh, Windsor's Mr. Personality. He's got such a big personality. He wants to play, but he also wants to have fun. There's nothing wrong with having fun, but we can't allow him to have fun at our expense. We tell him to do something, he's got to do it, okay? Just that simple. When he does it, we praise him. How do we praise him? Good words, good touch. Add a boy and touch. We can use a treat if you want to, a Cheerio or something like that, but when we give him a Cheerio, we still give good words and good touch. When he does something that we don't like, something that disobeys our command or something like that, we provide words and touch as well, but that's consequence. The words are, eh, no. And it's typically, with him, a little tap of the leash. I can tap the leash and I'm biting him, okay? We don't have to bite him hard. In fact, if we bite him and he freaks out, we bit, bit way too hard, okay? It's designed just to tap the leash to get his attention and ask him to do the right thing. After that consequence, he's usually doing what we ask, so we come back and follow up with praise again. Good words, good touch but not as good as if he did it right the first time, okay? Very, very important. Well, there's a number of things. I've addressed some things in this book that will go home with you, but there's a number of things that I just want to show you right now. The very first thing is walking on a leash. You should be able to go for walks, go out in public, go to parks. You can do all these things. We have proven this with him here. Meet people, do anything that you want, but there has to be boundaries. There has to be structure for him. The very first thing is, is when we're standing here, we don't have to have him in a sit or a down when we're talking to someone. If we want to put him in it, we can. But when we put a dog in a sit or a down when we stop to talk to someone, that means we have one eye on the person we're talking to and one eye here. Because if he breaks the command and you don't see him doing it, he's learning that your words aren't as powerful as you want them to be. So typically when I go up to someone, and meet someone with a dog, I might have him sit her down to begin with. I say, hi, how are you doing? I break him. And then when I release him, he still cannot pull the leash. He has to stay right over here to my side. If he pulls it, I'm going to tap the leash back in the direction I need to, a little bite. Eh, no. If I can't say that with someone, just the tap alone will be fine in this case. And I'm letting him see that he can be cordial, he can be there with me, but I've got a conversation going with someone. He's not going to pull me to get to them because if he starts to pull me, I'm going to tap the leash. Let's go is our walking command. When we are walking on let's go, I usually like my dog to walk right beside me, especially in the beginning. Uh, when he's walking beside me, two things are happening. One, I'm leading the walk, and two, I'm in control of all things, and that means distractions are going to become less of an issue, okay? At some point in time, if you want to walk him, let him walk in front of you, that's entirely up to you. When I do take him out to the bathroom, we walk together on a let's go. He's beside me. But then when we get to the point for him to use the bathroom, I'll usually break him, tell him to hurry up, and then I let him go out and walk around. And the way uh, Windsor likes to use the bathroom, sometimes he'll pull just a tad. I might give a little bit so he can get just right to do what he needs to do, okay? When he's using the bathroom, I give him that word, hurry up, go potty, add a boy, because I'm teaching him to use the bathroom on command as well. He's done real well with his house training. Again, I got a few notes for you in the booklet, but he's done well. He's gonna do real, real well with you as long as you keep an eye on him for the, for the near future, okay? You ready? So, let's go. Here's the tongue of my boy, add a boy, good boy. And he's walking with me. You turn, if he doesn't go, I'll tap the leash. I sort of faked him out there. Good boy. And when he watches you, you praise him. Now what would I do? If he started to get out in front of me, I would tap the leash parallel, as parallel to the ground as I could, back in the direction that I am, or the direction you want him to go. If he started going off that way, I would tap him this way. Again, parallel. I'll tell him, ah, no, let's go, good boy. And then I'll praise him when he's back to doing it right. Let's go, buddy. Good boy. So he's walking with me. We can walk on a loose leash. It's important that in the beginning you don't give him 20 feet of leash or 6 feet of leash. You keep it a little short so you can tap the leash real quick. Good boy. 
It's been hot this last month and we're going to try to be quick because we don't want to overheat our dogs either. So it's best to try to walk them in the morning or in the evening. The heat of the day is just a lot for any dog. Let's go. Next thing, sit. Hand signal for sit. Good boy. Sit means sit. Doesn't mean get up. It means stay in that sit until I release him. I did not say the word S-T-A-Y. That has its own meaning. I typically will not keep a dog in a sit for more than a minute or two at the most because I just feel like it's uncomfortable on their rear ends. If I need him to be there in a place, I'm going to go down. Good boy. Hand signal from the side, down. Sit is the hand signal, down from the side. Now, if he needed to be there for a while, I would tell him to down. That's a lot more comfortable for him, and he has to hold it. Also, a little uh, sidebar, when we tell him to down, that's the most subordinate position for a dog with humans. He's submitting to us. He's showing us our authority. Now, if I need to leave him there for more than a couple of minutes, and I'm going to break my command by telling you, stay. I'll tell him to stay. When I tell him to stay, he can smell the ground, he can chew a bone, he can do whatever. Roll over on the side, go to sleep, I don't care. He just has to hold that down stay. Also, you stay for room commands. Like if we're trying to keep a dog in our kitchen, for instance, he starts to come up to the door, we tell him to stay. If he comes through the door, tap, 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 no, 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 back into the kitchen, stay. Good boy, okay? Normally, I keep a dog in a down stay for at least two minutes. I'm not doing that here for the purpose of the video. Break. Break is our release command, okay? Sit. Now, if he didn't sit then, or if he got up, I would take the leash and go, ah, sit. See that? I am biting him. That's a consequence. I think you can see it doesn't hurt him. We're not here to hurt him. We don't have to beat the sense into him to get him to listen. All we have to do is give a little nip, just like mom would or another dog in the pack. We'll go, ah, sit. And then when he does it, we'll reach down and tell him, good boy. Break. Let's go. So sit is up. D-O-W-N, down, and he did it. But pretend like I'm uh, Windsor. This is his head. If he didn't down, I would just tap the leash towards the ground. No, down, and then good boy. Okay, very important, okay? Sit, down from the side. Break, let's go. Sit, down from in front, okay? Uh, hand signal is up like this from in front to tell him to down. That's such a good boy. The next on leash command is the C-O-M-E. Come. He comes to me. He sits right in front of me. And a boy. And he has to hold that sit. He's in the sit at the end of that command. Break. Now, come on leash is really important, okay? We're laying the groundwork for him to come off leash. On leash, come. If he doesn't come to us and sit, we're going to bite him. If he's in the process of uh, coming to us and gets distracted, we're going to tap the leash, just like with the let's go, towards us and tell him, no, come, okay? If he comes to us and doesn't sit, we're going to tap the leash and tell him, no, sit, once he's at in front of us, okay? Very important to realize. Most of the time, he'll, not, he'll break those commands when we're not doing what we're supposed to do, okay? He knows to come command. So we make sure that we tell him to come, and he comes to us and sits, and then we praise, okay? Praise after the command is completed. Pray. a boy. Good boy. You're a good little boy. Let's go. So we've got sit, down, come. Let's go. a boy. Next thing is, one of the things you told me is the furniture in the house. You don't, you have one chair that you allow him up on, but the rest you don't. That's great. That is no problem whatsoever. If he starts to get up on the furniture, it's a little tap down. If you don't have a leash on him, you grab him by his little collar. No, no, down. Good boy. Okay? But when you want him to get up on the furniture, it should be by command only. So I will use a hub command. You can use any word you want with this, just be very encouraging. Let's go. So we're going to try it with this stump right over here. We're going to come up. Sit. Good boy. Ah, boy. He's gonna, he likes this now. He's really going to like it when he, it means he's going to break. 
he's going to be able to get up in the chair with you and sit with you. In fact, I've got an oversized leather chair, and whenever I tell him to come up, he would come up, hop in my lap, and then get over to the side. He did that real well with me, and I was real proud of him, and I enjoyed loving on him. Like I said, he's got such a personality. He's such a sweet guy. You notice this focus is tremendous. A lot of dog trainers would kill for this focus where he's watching you to see what you want him to do. Let's go. All right, the next command is the place command. This is a wonderful command that you can use to spend more and more time with him upstairs. And it's a command that you're in control, but at least he's with you. Let's go. Place is you get on your bed, you lay down, sit down, stand up, read a book, smoke a cigarette. I don't care what he does as long as he stays on his place. It's his place. We don't tell him to sit or down on it. We just have him chill on his bed. Hand signal, place. Good boy. As soon as he gets on it, he's fine. Lays down, a boy. If he sat down, a boy. Okay? My rule of thumb is we don't allow him to get his elbow off. He's from his elbow on onto his bed. And he'll hold that for an hour or two. Now, him holding it for an hour or two, he's going to want to be a part of you. And one of the things we've noted, and we talked about it with him being his crate uh, before he came here, he may start to whine, okay? If he starts to whine and you don't like it, you have to go over there and tell him no, and tap him, and tell him place. One of the things I would do is give him a toy, maybe one of the elk antlers we sell on Amazon. He loves it, a little split anchor antler, but we have to supervise him with it, okay? We never give him a hard toy or a potential chokeable toy and not supervise. I don't care what kind it is, all right? Very important, he loves them, he'll play with it, his little plastic bottles you'll give him, he'll throw them everywhere, but if he throws it too far off the bed, he will stay on his bed and you have to go get it, okay? Or you break him and let him go get it. He'll do this, like I said, hour or two, easy. Easy he'll do this. And he's happy and he's part of you guys. That's so important, if he gets up, and I would have the leash on him in the beginning. It's no, go get the get him, take the leash. No, 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 no. Place, good boy. And tap him all the way back. Once you put him on the bed, you immediately go back to where you were, okay? You've seen kids that act out to get attention, their parents' attention and what have you. We can't let him think him breaking the place is gonna get us to spend time with him. So we put him back and we, deliberately go right back to what we were doing to show him that he can't interrupt what's going on. Hope that makes sense. Good boy. Right, right, let me get up now. Let's go. So he's doing real well on all these commands. Another command that we haven't really worked on is the heel command. I'll be happy to work with you. Hopefully we'll be able to do that when you come to pick him up. And by the way, just know, as I've told you before, he goes home I'll be happy to do a follow-up with you in your home for special circumstances that may be occurring there and forever if you want to do a follow-up. I think I've told you that Rachel and I or whoever's here as a training uh, partner will be happy to work with you at no charge, okay? We want what's best for your family. We want what's best for him. Like I said, this is a fantastic guy, okay? He deserves to have a lot of of uh, communication with people because he's just that kind of dog, okay? He plays with our German Shepherds. He'll run around and play with them. My biggest concern for him is not the running and the biting, but getting run over by them because he feels like he's just as big as they are. All right, let's go. The last thing we were going to talk about is the heel command. The heel command, imagine we have a box by our side, okay? We want him to stay in that box when we're walking. Quite honestly, I don't use the heel command unless I'm doing some sort of demonstration with my dogs. Remember what I said about the let's go? The let's go can be as much leash as you want to give him, okay? Well, we're going to keep it short, atta boy. Uh, we're going to keep it short for heel, and our job is to try to keep him in that box. And when we stop, he has to sit. Here's the hand signal, heel, atta boy. We stop, he sits. Good. I step off, watch him turn right back into me. Stop. Oh, you better. That was almost a little bit too long, okay? 
If he did that again, I would tap him and tell him, not no heel, but no sit. Why? Because in the heel, he's in the heel position, he just failed to sit. So watch. Heel. No. Sit. You see how I did that? Heel. Let's see if he gets the idea this time. Good boy. And then after we tell him that, he's got to hold that sit until we release him. Right. I hope you saw that. He's done real well. He's going to make a mistake. There's only been one perfect being to ever walk this earth, and it wasn't me. It wasn't him. It wasn't any human that's walking the earth right now, as far as I know. He's going to make a mistake. Learn from it. Let him learn from it, and be consistent in what you're doing. So many times uh, we get stressed out by the things that are happening, and most of the time it's because of us. We've been lax in some areas, we haven't been consistent, or the timing hasn't been good. We create those problems. As I had mentioned to you, one of the things that you had talked about was to sit and stay and come. He's doing all of those fantastic. Leave it. Let's talk about leave it. You can use that word leave it, but when I use leave it, I would use the same tone as no or act, okay? I believe that there should only be a couple of negative terms uh, terms or inflections from the leader. That's why I leave it to me as like another negative. When he starts to chew something like a leaf or something along those lines, it's a no and a bite. And then a good boy afterwards. I don't like to leave it, but if you wanted to use leave it, you just supplant what I told you to say no to leave it. Then when you tell him to leave it, if he goes to get it again, it's no leave it and then you're gonna be fine with it, okay? The jumping on the people's fantastic. We've had him around everybody that we can think of. In and out, part of our family, people out of our family. He's done real well. But one of the things that he's gonna to wanna to do with you and mom, primarily mom, because he hasn't really jumped on you, is he's gonna to wanna to jump on her when he sees her for the first time. Why is that gonna happen? Because he's conditioned to jumping. So it's going to be very important on your part uh, to, when you go up, that you wait for him to see if he's going to jump. If he starts to jump, you're going to tap the leash and tell him, ah, and then you're going to tell him, good boy. And you're not going to just do that once. You're going to try to have the, the reciprocator of the jump to try to encourage him to jump, and you're going to bite and tell him no. And we're never, ever going to pet him unless all four feet are on the ground. If they're up on our leg and we pet him, and that's what we've done, we've symbolized to him that that's okay, that that's the way for you to get attention. So jumping's just gonna be a little bite, and then it's gonna be a praise when all four feet are on the ground. Then we're gonna, I call it entrapment, we're gonna try to make him jump. Hey buddy, hey Windsor. We're gonna try to make him jump. You see how he gets real close? Cause he's learned not to jump, but he's gonna try it again with you. Like I tell all my clients, just because he's been here doesn't mean he's gonna change all those things when he goes home because that's always already conditioned behavior. But he's going to be able to learn so much quicker not to do them if I can get you to buy into everything, okay? Uh, the car, we practiced the car the other day. I would put a little blanket down for him, like you did in the, uh, uh, the foot of the, the uh, car seat or in the floor. Use a blanket, have him place, okay? He's going to do fine. If he starts to jump up on the seat, it's no, no, place. He should be able to go anywhere with you. He should be able to go to parks, uh, to uh, gatherings, to family reunions. He can go anywhere and be the guy that you want him to be. He's demonstrated that he can do it. If you have any questions, you just pick up the phone and call us. You know, he is such a good boy, and he's going to do all the things that you ask him. We just have to make sure we're consistent. It's my job to teach you how to be consistent. So if you have a question, you gotta let me know. If we need to work, you gotta let me know. Because this guy needs a wonderful life and I'm sure you're gonna give it to him. And by you giving him a wonderful life, you're gonna be blessed by him. Thank you so much. My name is Jim Hodges, jimhodgesdogtraining.com, 336-945-3232, okay? If you have any questions or ever need me, please do not hesitate to call. Take care and good luck. Bye-bye. Right. Hey, why are you doing